r slash no sleep posted by you slash revolutionary bit 630 an ice cream truck man comes by every night at 3 14 a.m he says he can make all our wishes comes true i'm writing my tale here as a warning for others so if anyone comes upon this creature they know what to do he's gone now but i fear he might still be out there preying on new victims so here i am typing monday 3 14 a.m july 2nd 2012 my name is Olivia. Olivia Smith. It all started the summer of 2012, when I was just shy of 11 years old. It was a hot Monday night and the heat of my small room was so oppressive, I had thrown away my sheets and was staring up at the ceiling, sweat trickling down my temple. My sleeping habits have always been terrible and, without initiative, I had no reason to try counting sheep. I'm waiting for my father to come up the stairs and go to bed for the snoring to begin shaking up the house so I could sneak to the kitchen and nibble on some cereal and maybe even make a sandwich. There'd be hell to pay if he caught me stuffing myself like a pig. The previous year, he'd gone as far as to put a lock on the cabinets after catching me with beef jerky in my pockets. Summer was always the worst. No school meant no backpack, no backpack meant I had to find other places to hide my stash. It was too hot to wear anything but shorts with tiny pockets, the convenience store was not convenient at all and worst of all, he would enroll me in some sport and I'd be growling with hunger by the end of it. It wasn't that my dad wanted me to starve, but he wanted me to be healthy and healthy was a strict vegetarian diet. Or at least that's what mom said. All I wanted in that moment was a turkey sandwich lacquered up in mayo and paprika, along with a cold cola to wash it down with. We had none of that at, so I'd have to concoct some other monstrosity instead. It was then I'd first heard it. The turkey in the straw song, coming faintly from my window. It was almost like it was directly outside, like I could open the curtains and an ice cream truck would be floating on the second floor. Its silhouette was visible from down the street, slowly making its way up towards my house. At the same time as it crossed the crossroad, he nearly caught me awake, peeking from a small crack in the door. My father shut the door and I heard his footsteps go forward then take a right. The tap was running for what seemed like forever, but eventually, the bathroom light went off and he got into his own sheets. Dad was asleep as soon as his head hit the pillow, his snoring was audible above all else, shaking the foundation of the house. No wonder I couldn't shut my eyes, with all the noise everyone made at night. It took me a second to realize that the song was still playing, now stronger. It was starting to piss me off. I craved for spicy, salty and sour treats, not the aftertaste of a bad trip to the toilet. Wouldn't it be nice if it was a shawarma truck instead? Why was an ice cream truck doing rounds in the middle of the night anyway? Who could possibly want to go outside and buy an ice cream at what time was it? The clock said 3.14, and I could only to grunt and open the window again. It had parked right outside Mulligan's and was setting shop right in their pavement. A man with a striped apron and one of those silly hats was circling and checking the wheels. Just then, I saw Max Mulligan open his front door, wearing a robe over his pajamas. He looked ridiculous, especially wearing long sleeves in ADF and those big Harry Potter glasses that were too big for his face. I scoffed to myself as he waddled to the truck and ordered himself a frozen treat. He slipped from my eyesight behind the vehicle, so I was left counting the comically large stickers of melting ice cream tape to the sides of the van. My mouth watered suddenly, surely, they sold other things other than freezer burn, right? Maybe I could still get a Coca-Cola, hell, I'd settle for a Pepsi. I pondered it over, but my hunger was starting to fog my head. Maybe they sold real food too. Waffles or pancakes? I could go for some salted caramel and peanuts actually. Yes, I'd go and ask, what's the worst that could have happened? I was just about to jump off my bed, when I realized I had no cash left. The Unwritten, Volume 5, was discarded face down on the floor, mocking my hasty purchase. It wasn't my fault that the comic had nearly sold out before I got to the shop, but the last $10 of my weekly allowance was a small price to pay to rub it on Owen's face and letting him borrow it later. My mood soured even more after that. The music was starting to grate my brain, like having to listen to my aunt's cheerful voice on Christmas until I wanted to shove my fist down her throat to make it stop. I took one final look out of the window. Max was happily licking his cone, mouth stained with red cherry flavoring. The man next to him was saying something, gesturing wildly with his hands. He was smiling, widely, and for a moment his teeth seemed to shine. They both snapped their heads at me, staring at me staring at them. Max's mouth was agape, and even though I couldn't see his exact expression, he looked petrified. He scrambled on his feet and stumbled back home, shutting the front door behind himself. 
The man just stood there, looking up. The hair in the back of my head stood up and my blood ran cold. I knew it then, I knew there was someone right behind me. The bed gave in beneath a knee that wasn't mine, but I couldn't move. I was frozen, distantly aware that seeing my breath fog up in the middle of summer wasn't normal. He waved at me, forever smiling widely, like a cartoonish nightmare. I pulled the curtains closed with trembling hands, then whipped around to see who had broken into my house. The room was dark, hot and empty. My heart hammered, but no one jumped out from beneath my bed or inside my closet. Eventually, I decided I must have dreamt it all. If not, tomorrow someone would whine to the police about the noise and the truck would never return. I wish it hadn't. I didn't get to eat anything that night or that morning. I slept through my alarm and my father, in his usual Monday frustration, was livid. He lived for perfection and anything less than that was unacceptable. It's why he hated summers as much as I did. Working a 9-to-5 office job with no air conditioning and having to deal with the failure of a daughter would drive anyone mad. Without homework and test grades to compare my existence to, he resorted to whatever he could find at the moment. I wouldn't say he was an abusive parent at the time, he was just stressed. His more narcissistic tendencies were shielded by my mom, who would talk him down when he was angry and had the belt out. I actually felt relieved when he let me get away with it mostly unscathed. My measly allowance, $15 felt almost like a reward for staying put with my eyes on the corners of the table while my parents ate breakfast. Mom sneaked another $10 on my pocket, pretending to fix my shirt before we left. She gave me a wink and motion for me to be silent, like I didn't already know that. It was a 15-minute drive to the sports center, which was coincidentally close to my dad's workplace. I would stop by his office later to have the lunch mom had packed for both of us. Until then, we sat in easy silence. Carly Rae Jepsen's Call Me Maybe playing in the radio. I hummed along with it, ponytail swishing with my head movements. He was too masculine to do that, but tapped his fingers on the beat against the wheel. His bad mood had melted away when we found easy parking right next to the tall glass buildings. Work hard. Don't let me catch you slacking, okay champ? I won't, I promise. He patted my hair in approval. I'm sorry about this morning, but when you grow older, there'll be no long vacations. Discipline and dedication are the only things that will get you far in life. I know dad, I'm sorry. Okay, Liv. I won't hold you anymore, go ahead. I gave him a kiss and ran to the gates, stopping briefly to wipe my feet on the ancient welcome mat. The sports center was a big open space with three different fields of basketball, volleyball and soccer. A long running track separated them, joggers doing laps at any time of the day and occasionally playing the audience for the athletes. I was always the first to arrive at 8.50, so I had nothing to do but wait for the clock to strike 11 and maybe join the middle-aged women into doing some yoga. But first, I had other priorities. I paced slowly, feigning nonchalance at where I was heading for. I took a moment in front of the vending machines, trying not to make a face at the pathetic excuses of a refreshing drink, then picking a can that claimed it was lemonade with reduced sugar. It tasted of battery acid with a hint of citrus and it burned my tongue up with its bitterness. Ew. There wasn't much to do after that. I did a light walk, then a jog, barely working up a sweat. A team of players ran amuck over a deflated ball, each blaming another for its condition. 9.25. Stretched, did some yoga, had a chat with a random lady about where the bathrooms were. 10.05. Tried doing a double backflip, landed on my ass, kept doing it until I was too dizzy to get up. 10.33. After convincing myself that I'd done enough not to be considered lazy, I hid behind a large plant and just stayed on my phone, keeping it plugged in so it wouldn't lose battery. The best thing about the sports center, which made it much more popular than it would have otherwise been, was the free Wi-Fi. 11.14. The first to arrive was Owen. He looked strung up, looking around until I waved him over. He let out an audible sigh of relief and sat down in the narrow space between myself and the hibiscus. You okay? He's following me again. Owen's brother, Kevin, also known as Twat Supreme, was what I still consider to be a budding sociopath. He was as tall and thick as a tree with an anger streak that made him a vicious football player. If it wasn't for the same tight black dreads, no one would ever presume that they were siblings. He was the terror of the neighborhood and the apple of his father's eyes, a washed-out NFL quarterback with a back injury. It wasn't easy for Owen to be asthmatic in a house that had testosterone for tap water. At least I knew my father did what he did out of hard love. There was a sizable bruise on his arm. I didn't ask about it, I already knew. It's why we stuck to each other like glue. 
I can sneak you into the girl's bathroom and tell you to come out when it's safe. He chewed on the inside of his cheek, but nodded. I waited for a while, watching Kevin and praying he wouldn't pick up a ball and doing rounds. God must have picked up, because his phone rang with a jarring death metal music and he loudly answered it, hopping on his dad's jeep and driving off without a seatbelt. His girlfriend on the other side made a great catch. We kind of just kicked around after that, doing random stunts and sending each other Tumblr links. The site was new and exciting, especially for two Harry Potter obsessed preteens. Magic seemed so cool back then. Did you see the ice cream truck last night? I asked him. You heard it too? I thought I was going crazy. I know right. It stopped right across the street. Saw Max Mulligan go outside and get an ice cream. Lucky bastard. I wanted one too, but Pops fell asleep on the sofa and I couldn't sneak out. I was craving a chocolate bar all night. Do you think maybe the truck will come around again? Who knows? In the middle of the night, too. Who wants ice cream at 3 a.m.? He put two thumbs up and pointed at himself, doing a little shimmy dance. This guy does. But like, it's probably one of those quirky business plans, like that fast food truck that only sells grilled cheese for a dollar and doesn't give change. What do you mean they don't give change? How the fuck does that make sense? It's like, you give them five dollars and they give you five grilled cheeses. And just like that, the topic shifted. I didn't even notice the time passing until my phone rang with a signature tune for dad's calls. I let it ring for one, two, three chirps before picking up. Hi dad. Hey champ. Do you want me to pick you up? No, no, I got it. Do you want me to bring anything? I already got the newspaper today, don't worry. Alright, I'll be right there. I turned to Owen, who was already picking up his skateboard. I'll meet you at the field? Thanks. Do I look sweaty enough? Like you ran through the sprinklers. Dad had a half hour lunch break which we ate in the kitchen at of D&M Accounting's office. I knew all his co-workers by name, age and lifestyle at that point. They weren't incredibly interesting people, but they had one thing in common, they all hated their supervisor, an old dude in his mid-fifties who hated anything that wasn't a straight white middle-aged man with a productive job, a wife and two and a half kids. So, he disliked his entire staff. Glaxo, Smith, Klein settles the largest healthcare fraud case in history for 3 billion US dollars, Dad said taking a bite out of his apple. What a nightmare the world has turned into live, can't even trust the medicine these days. Do you think they'll go under? That's a lot of money. I took small, finger-sized bites despite my stomach's protests. If the lunch went well, I could go to the skate park and knock back cheap hot dogs from Costco. It's a big company, so who really knows? They say they're making changes. He snorted. Anyway, how are your friends doing? Owen's fine. Met his brother today. He's still a you know how he is. A gorilla pretending to be a man. That's how he is. Unbelievable how they just let him loose like that without any sort of supervision. It's a miracle how his brother is the most mentally stable in the family. I saw him drive without a seatbelt. Dad clicked his tongue in dissatisfaction. My chest tightened with a short-lived pang of fear. If Kevin found out I was talking shit behind his back, he wouldn't take it very well. I didn't want Owen to know either. Some of the things dad said about his family were Insensitive at best, racist at worst We're going to skate at the park for a while, but I promise to be back before 5 I can wait in the lounge? I might be late Silence I can come at 5.30? Or maybe I can walk home? Don't be ridiculous, it's too far Be here at 7 An ice cream truck man comes by every night at 3.14 am He says he can make all our wishes comes true Part 2 Tuesday, 3.14 a.m., July 3, 2012. My phone buzzed me awake just as the truck's lullaby started again in the distance. I brushed the sleep off my face, answering with a confused and raspy voice. It was Owen, chirpy and loud like an obnoxious bird on his birthday. Can you sneak out? What? Where? What? The ice cream truck is here. The street is swamped. That weird feeling returned this time stuck in the back of my throat like the aftertaste of artificial sugar. Something was wrong again. I can't come that far, my dad will kill me. Yeah, thought it was worth a try anyway. Do you want me to get you anything? I sat up on my bed, yawning. What does he have? Ice cream. It's an ice cream truck. Haha, ha, what flavors dumbass? Well, um, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, all the usual. But they're named ironically. 
I mulled it over for a second, grinding my teeth. It was a subconscious habit at that point, which I have yet to get rid of, despite my dentist's protests. How about a Napolitana ice cream sandwich? Does he have those? Let me check. The phone shot an electric shock in my arm the second the words came out of his mouth. Startled, I dropped it on floor, where it bounced twice from. It played loud static, interfered by familiar music. I panicked, jumping from my bed and stuffing my pillow over the noise, looking at the door and waiting for my parents to bang on it for waking them up. After a long minute of breath holding, there was no movement in the house. A primal awareness came over me, itching from within my bones. That thing was here again. From behind my back, the curtain slid open, letting in moonlight bit by bit. Something cold, a finger maybe, reached for my head and slowly pulled a lock of hair away from my face to sit behind my ear. And just like that, it was gone without a creak. I turned around and found nothing but the wall. The room's temperature had dropped significantly and I was shivering in my nightgown. My lungs scrambled for breath. The phone was silent again. Slowly, waiting for something to jump out. I removed the pillow and found it dead. The battery was at 0%. The curtain was still open, clear proof that it had to be real. At some extent. I didn't sleep at all that night. I'll buy you a new one, Dad said, looking at the broken charger. It smelled of burnt plastic, so he wrapped it up in some tissues and threw it down the can. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have left it charge overnight. Don't worry about it, they don't make things like they used to. The lid came down with a snap of abandonment. Do you want anything else? Um, I was wondering if I could go to the library today instead? Or maybe I could go after I have lunch with you? How far away is it? It's right around Scanlan Park. I could do some running then? Get some fresh air. Well, alright then. After lunch, before 5. I hugged him tight, kissing him in the cheek. He smiled back at me. But get something worth reading, not those fantasy type nonsense. I don't even like those. I lied. We went through our routine just fine after that. I was pretty proud of myself for avoiding any frowned faces, so much so that I completely forgot what had happened until Owen skipped over to keep up with my quick jog. Hey! Good morning to you too. It's early for you, isn't it? I didn't sleep at all last night. Which you would know if you were reachable. I'm sorry. My phone died. I slowed down to a brisk walk, but the lack of shut eye made Owen more lethargic than usual. His asthma pump was nowhere to be seen. Don't worry about it, he said he'll be around for a few days if business goes well. And it's going great. How much did he sell in one night? 20-ish? Max ate four Jacobs one after the other. What kind of flavor is a Jacob? Forest fruit chocolate cake and they feel like a warm hug from your mom. Never heard of that brand before. It's not a brand, all the ice cream is handmade Italian gelato with all natural ingredients. Were you hired as a marketing manager or something? It's really good ice cream. So good that I ate yours on the way here. He showed his sticky hands without remorse, I guess he knew I wouldn't be mad at an avoided trip to fuck your bowels town. I shrugged. Wait, I missed that first bit. You met Max? Yeah. Is he okay? Yeah. He looked fine to me. Why? Why indeed. But I couldn't shake it off. Something was wrong but I had no proof of it. I didn't even know as what happened the night before actually happened. Can I tell you something? In confidence? Sure. I sat down on our spot by the plant, dragging him with me. I told him about the phone, but for some reason, I didn't want him to know about it. His face scrunched up in disbelief. Are you absolutely sure your phone didn't just glitch or has a virus from that pirating site? I'm telling you, that's not my point. He was out with no supervision, talking to a stranger, at 3 a.m. Stranger danger, dude. We literally did that at school last month. Don't you think you're being a little? He paused, picking at a green leaf like it was the most interesting thing he'd ever seen. Homophobic? I just stared at him in awe. What does that have to do with anything? Well, would you react the same way if it was a girl running the truck? Yes. It's a white van luring kids out of their houses with ice cream, Owen, don't tell me that's not weird. The van is blue. It's white. It's literally sky blue with a cone sticker on the side. It's the color doesn't matter. He probably changed it so people wouldn't get confused and call the cops. You called the cops? No, damn it. I haven't called the cops. Are you even listening to me? I am listening to you. It's summer, nighttime is like, 
a concept that doesn't exist unless there's school tomorrow. The sun sets at 9 p.m., so technically, going out at 3 a.m. the same as going out at 11 p.m. when the sun sets at 5 p.m. I threw my hands up in frustration. I couldn't even reason with him when he was like that. Look, just come with us tomorrow. I promise you've never had anything like that before. The ice cream had to be 50% cocaine for that to be true, but I gave in. I had to see it with my own eyes to make sure someone wasn't taking advantage of our late night cravings and if something happened, I would be the only one with enough sense to tell an adult. Fine, I'll figure it out, I guess. After being informed by my father of the death of Andy Griffith, an actor neither of us had even heard of, he let me lose to browse the library until my feet dropped. I wanted to pick something with science in it, but all the covers looked so boring and the plots were may. Inch by inch, I turned to the young adult section, where the good stuff always hid between the shelves. Dystopian counts as science fiction, right? The selection, Bitter Blue, reached, Enclavo that one looked interesting, even if the main character was apparently named Deuce. I was reading the book blurb in the back when I almost missed it. A light sneeze from two rows further distracted me enough to take a glimpse at the thick-rimmed glasses of Max Mulligan. He was crouching, holding a red book in his hands. I couldn't see his face, but his sniffling was audible even from far. I approached him from behind, stepping on eggshells so he wouldn't know I was there. His shoulders were shaking and he was obviously wiping tears from his eyes. He was trying to be quiet about it, but a few sobs or hiccups escaped his chest. Without thinking about it, I handed him a wet wipe. Max jumped up to his feet, squealing like a little mouse. He clamped his mouth shut with his hand in horror, but couldn't breathe from his snotty nose without making some nasty noises. His left eye was swollen shut, blue and purple. Some sort of cream was applied on it, making it gloss under the fluorescent lights. My stomach dropped. After some practice, one can get an intuition about intentional and accidental bruises. That one was too sideways to have been from a bad fall. And Owen hadn't mentioned him looking beaten up. Seasonal allergies? I asked, still offering it. He took it and blew his nose shyly. The librarian shushed without ever looking up her computer. Max swallowed thickly. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. It's fine. You've lived across from me for about five months, right? My name is Olivia Smith, but most people call me Liv. I extended my hand for him to shake, but he didn't get it. Instead, we stood there in awkward silence. Um. I uh. I'm Max. I live across the street from you. The second he said it, he went pale as a sheet. His remaining eye fogged with tears again. Hey, hey don't cry, I whispered. Jesus, I was putting the fear of God into him simply by breathing. How about we sit down, huh? I actually have to uh go. I have home homework to do and a curfew. Yes, I have a curfew. Sorry. He practically ran away all the way to the door, almost left then turned around to get his book checked out first. I watched him try to put on a brave face for the librarian, who, once again, did not look up from her computer as she stamped his card. If I wasn't already convinced that I would look into the ice cream truck, that would have have been the last straw. An ice cream truck man comes by every night at 3.14 am. He says he can make all our wishes comes true. Part 3. Wednesday, 3.14 am, July 4, 2012. The song was starting to haunt my dreams at that point. My eyes hurt when I opened them, and I briefly wondered if I should just go back to sleep and try again tomorrow. The truck outside slowed down to a stop next to my mom's midnight bluebeard bushes. A stand on the side flew open, bouncing twice before settling midair, held up by iron chains. A massive American flag was tied up to the plastic cone on top of the truck like a superhero cape, flowing proudly despite the complete lack of wind. I'd forgotten it was the 4th of July. Max was faster than me, he was already out the front door while I was blindly reaching for some slacks to throw over my sleeping dress. I creeped out of my room, checking the hallway on each side like I was crossing the road. On my tiptoes, I made my way to my parents' bedroom. I pressed my ear to the door, holding my breath to hear if they were sleeping. There was no snoring, an unusual thing for him because he slept like a tractor working in the fields. Sometimes. He too would stay up all night for no reason, blankly staring at the TV but not actually watching anything. I looked into the bathroom. Empty. I went down the stairs, skipping over those that creaked and stretched my neck to see if there was a shadowy figure on the couch. Nothing. The kitchen was the same. The counters were spotless and organized the way mom liked it. I almost missed it, 
one of the blue chairs was slightly off to the side, stepping out of the carpet. I put it in its place, only to find that something else was now amiss. The fridge magnets, souvenirs from vacations back to Albania, were now cluttered up in a corner. I separated them, turned around, remembered I was still holding one piece in my hand, turned around again and they were ganged up in the same place like I hadn't just fixed them up. There was a fly buzzing around my head, obnoxiously bumping too close to my ear. I didn't bother arranging them this time, only swiped my hand across it and hoped no one would notice that the castle was now upside down. Whatever, I said to nobody. I'm just seeing things. Everything is okay. Everything is alright. The fly went into my ear, freaking me out even more. I swatted at it, hitting my own face harshly. It bounced off into the wall and with a hard slap, I killed it. The entire house shook with the impact. My lungs drew an involuntary breath. The lamp trembled from the short earthquake. I waited for the lights next door to turn on, for my parents to come thundering down, for the neighbor to start a dramatic howl everyone would roll their eyes to. But nothing happened. I didn't even realize I was moving until the sliding glass door was locked. I had my keys with me, even though I didn't remember picking them up. I even had my wallet with all its contents, $32, library card and three random sticky notes with water damage from the time I dropped it into a puddle. The ice cream truck was a pale pastel pink, with hundreds on stickers taped over it, all with a candy motif. Big bubblegum letters read Horfrost ice cream on the side, a smaller sentence beneath it, all our products are 100% natural and produced by humane matter. Bad grammar aside, Max, Owen and three other faceless people had camped out in my front yard like it was nothing, sitting down in benches drilled into concrete. I swear I heard an alarm bell go off into the distance, so muted I had to strain to hear it before it was gone. Hey! You made it! Keep your voice down! He placed a finger in front of his mouth, getting up and shaking dust of his pants. Let me introduce you to Max, my new friend and Jack, my new best friend. I thought I was your best friend. I hit him in the arm, only half joking. He'd met the guy yesterday and he was like, probably 30 and on the verge of being caught by the FBI. Hi, Max whispered meekly. His eye looked worse in the dim light. He was more tired than ever, shoulders dropping low and his knees pulled to his chest. He was nursing an oval cherry ice cream on a stick, already half finished and melting on his hand. Hey! That's for horses. What? What? He jumped up on his seat, looking around like he was unsure of anything around him. He took another experimental lick. Sorry, I was joking around. Oh, okay. There was an outstretched moment of awkward silence, before Owen poked me into the truck's direction. Look at the menu. It was a large table with over 50 different flavors, each with its own tagline on the bottom. Camera, tonic of lightning, control the weather, camera, potion of chaos, brings a new event into your life, camera, tonic of transcendence, see into the unknown, camera, flask of the archmage, not sure what it does yet, camera, elixir of iron skin, invincible, camera, filter of thunder, more weather control, but now with hints of dirt, camera, filter of desires, 18 plus only, camera, brew of ecstasy, seriously, legal adults only, camera, filter of intellect, pass all of your exams, camera, file of foresight, you should have seen this one coming, camera, brew of twilight, berry chocolate blast, makes you happy, very few of them gave any hints of what literal flavor the ice cream was, instead, they were named like Dungeons and Dragons potions, at least, half of them were. The other half were just normal names, Oliver, Sad Artist, James, Football Player, Todd, told some very funny jokes, Emma, here because representation. It was ridiculous and slightly unnerving, like joke that didn't quite land properly. I was so into reading the list, trying to figure out a meaning behind the hipster bullshit, that I didn't notice him until he was a literal inch away from my face. Howdy. Fuck. I must have jumped back half a foot, slamming back into the cold metal with a solid thunk. It burned when it hit my bare elbow, the friction ripping of some of my skin with it. I could see all three of them laughing, but it played like a comedic soundtrack, jarring and crowded. My name is Jack. What wish can I make come true for you today? What? He laughed again, mouth open to reveal four rows of shark-like teeth. A string of slime connected them together in a truly disgusting sort of way. He was clearly young, early twenties at best and ridiculously attractive. Tousle of blonde curls, deep brown eyes and a wide smile with two perfect dimples. He radiated comfort and chill vibes. I'm so sorry, 
Did I scare you too much? No, it's I'm okay. Not scared or anything. I tried to play it off, but my face was as red as a tomato. I couldn't even look at him. So, uh. Why is an ice cream truck around in the middle of the night? Yes. How did you know? It's the first thing out of everyone's mouths. He winked. I work for late night cravings, and we only do business at the odd hours of the night. Jack produced a card from his sleeve, holding it out between two fingers. Like the call of a siren, it was irresistible. Within a second, I was right in front of the cooler, looking at the colorful rectangles of syrup and ice cream. He placed the paper inside my outstretched wallet, replacing the sticky notes with it. I saw him open the cash register and throw them in, along with other strange knickknacks. The first one is always on the house, he said and pulled out a vanilla bar on a stick. This one is called Dine and Dash. It's an experimental flavor. He let the word roll around on split tongue, tapping his fingers impatiently on the table. I looked back at Max and Owen, both of them were nodding in encouragement. It's just some ice cream. Why am I hesitating? I bit into it, teeth first. It was. Well, it was definitely ice cream. It had a rich and thick flavor of vanilla that coated my entire tongue, I guessed it was the handmade gelato type, with vegan products and whatnot. Oh no, we don't serve vegan or vegetarian products actually. He answered. Had I asked a question? It's really good, I said. Still, it was rather disappointing. With the random things that had been happening since the truck first showed up, I was expecting something more. Lovecraftian. The ice cream was pretty tasty otherwise. I sat between Owen and Max, who shoved the last piece of his cone into his mouth, chewing loudly. I bristled, biting my tongue not to scold him. It was not my place. For all I knew, all kids my age ate like that, I was simply too mature for my age. At least that's what my mom always boasted about. He got up and waited politely at the end of the line, right behind a small child of no discernible face or gender. Jack smiled down radiantly at him and was already looking for something on the side. I took another bite, watching. I have a special treat for my best customer so far, how about it? Max nodded vigorously, already a big roll of fives from his jacket pocket. My mouth dropped for a moment. Where did he get all that money from? He was 11, maybe 12 years old. I didn't actually know details about him, he'd hardly been outside since they moved in. Mom tried speaking with his mother once, but was put down easy. I tried to recall what she'd said afterwards, coming home still holding the casserole. I remembered that it was a cheesy potato dish, but the actual conversation between my parents blurred. Hadn't she said that there were a lot of cameras around their porch? Something about dad not wanting me to be recorded. That was it. I broke off a big piece, rolling the cold cream along my thoughts. Dad had said that the Max's dad was out until dawn and he smelled strongly of liquor. He's a bad egg. A gambler never wins at luck games. I never really got the concept of betting money on horses, but I suppose some things are meant for other people to mull over. Max's new ice cream was a swirly soft serve with little yellow flowers sprinkled on top. It'll help with that nasty bruise you have. He didn't waste any time asking if the flowers were edible or not. His tongue licked a large stripe on the side of the cone and we all watched as the purple sack on his face faded away to a regular flesh color. What the did you see that? Owen shot up to his feet, looking at them like. Like they'd done something incredible and impossible. I was stuck in place, mouth open. Only then did I realize that my own ice cream was still intact. It was still a perfectly frozen vanilla bar on a stick, untouched and not even close to melting on the summer night heat. Holy shit, it's endless ice cream. I'm afraid it's not. We're currently out of stock on that flavor, Jack said, tearing of the wrapper of a paper packet with his pointy teeth. It just has all the calories of a large breakfast, lunch and dinner. If you whisper what you want to eat, you might just get to eat it. Owen, who was rotating Max's head around to see the damage, or more accurately the lack of, twisted around like we'd said his name. You have to try it. Come on. Okay. Okay. Just let me get myself together first. I took a deep breath, uncertain of what to say. I had so many questions, but all their eyes were now on me and my skin broke out in a cold sweat. First things first. Prove the ice cream is magic with my own eyes. Mouth. Tongue. KFC spicy chicken. It burst like a popcorn kernel. One second it was a plain bar, the next, it looked like a manufacturing mistake covered in chocolate and grated nuts. It looked like the chicken wing version of the word humanoid. I'm not quite sure how to describe it. Oh Jesus. Okay. The moment of truth. 
It tasted strongly of frying oil, spices and fast food. It was warm, not too hot and felt more like a sauce you dip bread in, but it was absolutely delicious. Oh my god I would love some curly fries with this. Pop. You try it, I swear it was exactly like KFC. I handed the wavy rectangle to Owen, who stared at it with a look of pure awe. He took of a piece with his hands, held it up at us for approval and popped it into his mouth. His jaw moved quickly, stopped, then his eyebrows shot so far up his forehead, they touched his hairline. On God, we're going to Narnia. Or Lord of Rings. Or Harry Potter. The books are called Lord of the Rings, the actual place is called Middle-earth. Max corrected. He was on his last few bits, a single flower left dangling on the side for its life. Hey Max, why don't you try it for yourself? What's your favorite food? He excitingly rambled off, arguing with Owen about the superior version of short ribs. I had my own things to add to the conversation, but I ignored it in favor of taking a good look at the ice cream he'd handed over without a second thought. It was speckled with blue glitter, maybe ice crystals and smelled faintly of a hospital and cotton candy. The arnica flower was slightly wilted, but looked innocent enough. I regretted it the second it went into my mouth. Suddenly, it was no longer petals and a stem but a living, moving, thing. I tried to spit it out, but it came right in. In mid-panic, I dropped the cone on the pavement. It splattered all over and started to bubble like it was boiling. I bit it. It was surprisingly crunchy, but it died on the spot. A vile liquid soured my mouth, half bloody, half vermin. The tongue was completely numb, but my teeth felt sticky and raw. I fanned my open mouth, breathing heavily. I tried to look for Jack, but the truck window was empty. Instead, he was right behind me, hand gently tapping the back of my neck. Pepsi? He opened a chilled can, dripping water on his clawed fingers. They were long, with five joints instead of three and ended in sharp pointy nails painted a deep forest green. There was dried crusted blood hidden by a row of silver bracelets, dangling with little shiny charms. I downed the whole thing in one go, not stopping to breathe even when I was close to drowning. The fizz burned the roof of my mouth, washing away the remains of what I'd just eaten. I tried not to think about how I'd just swallowed a bug. I should have warned you, he whispered. He pushed the loose hair off my shoulders, wrapping a lock around his wrist. If you're not ill, then the ice cream won't know what to do with itself. What are you? My voice was scratched and my heart was beating so hard against my ribs that it was going to explode. I'm just a simple ice cream truck driver. I threw up anything I ate that day, no matter how hard I tried to keep it down. I wasn't hungry or tired, but I was miserable in other ways. My body shook with excess energy, my legs bouncing like I needed a bathroom break every few minutes. It was a horrible day to lose appetite. My parents went to the accounting firm's 4th of July lunch, no kids allowed so I got a rare treat to stay at home and watch all the Netflix I wanted. I could have sat down in front of the TV and turned the volume to the sky, chugging down monster cans and chips. Instead, I crossed the road to wake Max up and drag him all the way to Owen's neighborhood. His dad's car made a U-turn when it saw us, the man himself waving wildly like a maniac. I didn't need to be close enough to smell him to notice that he was under the influence of something. Max leaned in the window, speaking in a hushed and hurried voice. He stole a glance or two at me, ashamed to be caught scolding his father like a child. There wasn't much to say until we were ringing the buzzer of Owen's apartment building. You don't like him, do you? Who? Owen? He's my best friend. Jack. I pursed my lips, pushing the door and leading him across the lobby. Have you ever seen Once Upon a Time? Hmm? No. It's a TV show about fairy tale characters stuck in the real world. Anyway, one of them. Rumpelstiltskin keeps rambling on about how all magic comes with a price. I think that's true in our case too. Yeah, but we paid. But what are we really paying with? Sticky notes? The elevator chimed and slid its doors open, letting an old lady out. Well, in the end of it, as long as the price is fair, it's harmless right? He's done nothing wrong. Yet. An ice cream truck man comes by every night at 3.14 am. He says he can make all our wishes comes true. Part 4. Thursday, 3.14 a.m., July 5, 2012. I woke up ravenous and ready to eat an entire loaf of bread by myself. It was the hottest night of the entire summer and my hair was completely dry, despite having gone to bed right after taking a shower. The first thing I noticed was the blinking clock. 3.14 a.m., the same hour and minute I had been woken up since the start of the week by that damned song. I was hardly sleeping six hours, 
barely getting enough protein and my mood was all over the place. That Thursday was different though. I wanted to throw up the stomachache, but I knew I'd come up empty. Despite Max's and now Owen's protests, my instincts disagreed. Why was I the only one who saw past his charming face? If that was even his face. But what was he? A vampire? A ghost? An evil fairy? Is there even such a thing as evil fairies? I sat up on my bed, gritting my teeth as wheels screeched to a halt outside on the road. I've had enough of it, I said to nobody. I am taking the matter into my own hands and I don't care what they think at all. I stood like that for a moment, waiting for some type of response. Maybe he would try and stop me? But the room stayed as dull as ever, taunting me. What if I was wrong and they both lost their chance of becoming wizards or something? But I wasn't wrong. I was on the honor roll and I was rarely wrong about anything. If I thought he was bad news, then he was very obviously bad news. I just needed some evidence to back it up. The family computer in the office was an ancient beast surrounded by mom's legal paperwork. Her shelves, carpeted floor and even her chair were all a bright shade of lemon and covered top to bottom with folders, pens and every stationary item known to the 21st century. We were in the height of a nasty legal dispute with uncles abroad, which had accumulated in hundreds of rapports of land appraisal, property files, forged signatures and hearsay. Of course, that hadn't stopped them from building the skeleton of a three-story house over the farmland and my mother from screaming at the phone in Albanian. I sat in front of the computer, biting at my lower lip as it whirred to life. The screen lit up and I tapped the sticky keys with the first thing that came to mind. Fairies. Fay. Irish fairies. Ice cream truck at night. Late night cravings. Late night cravings company. I found nothing. Not a company, not a link, not even the ice cream truck name had any reachable site. I tried the ice cream names next, but it was a bust. They had no online footprint that I could find. The face on the monitor made me jump so hard that the chair and all its contents dipped over. A small pool of paper scattered on the ground, making way too much noise. There was nothing behind me, I checked. The thing on the screen vanished as quickly as it had appeared. Its blue skin and lack of nose scared me more than the teeth and claws, at least those made sense, a predator needed to hunt his food down, but what was the point of looking like Papa Smurf and Voldemort had an ugly baby? That was it. I couldn't take it anymore. Taking a huge breath and mustering up the courage, I shouted, Dad. I ran to the bedroom, swinging open the door. Dad. There's someone on the lawn. There's someone parked on the lawn. Dad, he's creeping me out. There was no answer from my parents' bed. I was expecting anger, confusion, for my dad to shoot up his bed and start yelling over the damn grass and how he part of the homeowner association and would not stand up for this, but there was no sound. His snoring usually a good indicator that he was passed out cold, wasn't audible. Dad? I shook his shoulder, but he didn't even stir. Mom? Mom, please wake up, I'm scared. I think he's in the house. Her face was slack and remained that way. Tears pricked my eyes and my sight went blurry. I wiped off the tear and started to beg with a trembling voice. Please, Mom, he even messed with your fridge magnets. Come on, now. This isn't funny. The wooden floor of the hallway creaked with a footstep. My blood went cold. Without even thinking, I crawled over my dad and got under the covers, pulling them over my head. The footsteps got closer and closer until it was in the same room. I could feel it stopping at the edge of the bed, looking at the three lumps on the mattress. My eyes were squeezed shut and I gripped the sheets like they were an iron shield instead of coarse linen cloth. I didn't dare move. A clock ticked away slowly. We didn't have one in the house, mom liked the digital ones better. So where was the sound coming from? I will return, he whispered. His voice was sweet and sticky like honey. The tone was almost soothing, like he was reassuring me that that would be a good thing. Tomorrow. Can I take Max with me today? I asked him. Normally, I wouldn't push it. His mood had been horrible since he woke up, we were late, we skipped breakfast and now the car wasn't working. Two. He snapped back, agitated. The boy across from us. I pointed in his direction. He's. My new friend. He waved me off dismissingly. I didn't wait for him to explain whether that was a yes or a no, so I booked it all the way to the mulligan's front door. I rang the doorbell impatiently, urging the door open in between my teeth. A woman with tight ginger curls cracked it open, cigarette in mouth. Before she could say hello, the words were already out of my mouth. Hi, is Max home? Jesus. Christ, of course he is. It's 8 in the morning. Who are you again? 
My name is Olivia, we're neighbors. I wanted to ask if he could come with to the sports center. Owen's coming too. Owen? Sports center? I nodded, impatiently. I turned my head to see my dad behind the wheel, looking out disapprovingly. He tapped watch. My dad is waiting. Can you call for him, please? Max, she yelled, disappearing back into the house. Less than a second later, a very confused and sleepy preteen walked out, holding a breakfast croissant. I really wanted a croissant at that moment. Hey, do you want to hang out? Me? Who else lives here? Okay. Should I change? No, you're fine. Let's go. I grabbed him by the hand and low-key dragged him back to the car. Get in. Am I being kidnapped? No, man, we need to talk about him. He nodded. He got in the back and I was about to follow him, when dad ordered me up front. So, Max, was it? Yes, mister. Um. Smith. He replied. You moved here from Las Vegas, if I remember correctly. Yes. It's very different around here. Much quieter. Indeed. Dad replied. He watched Max from the rearview mirror, silently judging the croissant flakes on his creased shirt. I'm sure you'll like it here. The sports center is open from 7 to 7, you should find yourself there more often from now on. I swallowed, mortified. I took a quick glance at Max, but he was nodding and shoving his remaining breakfast into his mouth. More flakes fell on the car seat and I struggled not to reach out and brush it off. Dad pursed his lips, his eyes cruising from the boy to the road. The traffic was terrible. A car accident slowed everyone down as they had to maneuver around the police vehicles and the ambulance. The radio and AC were off, the heat building up from the unforgiving sun beating down the windows. Max scratched his throat. So, how long until we get there? Depends whether the retard in front of us suddenly learns how to drive. Ten more minutes, at best. Ten long, endless minutes under the thick blanket of dad's anger. I knew his mood was only going to get worse and worse, but for the first time and for the first time ever, I had bigger things to worry about. We couldn't find a parking space, so he left us close to the center and took off. I swallowed a nervous lump and turned to Max with a dismissing hand wave. Sorry about that. He gets stingy on Thursdays. He nodded. No, I, I understand. You have to apologize, really. Let me buy you a drink first. We have to talk. For real this time. He nodded again. His cheeks were red with acne that he'd clearly picked on end, now that I was looking at him closely, his eyes were fidgety and unfocused. His hoodie hung a little too loose, his nails were a bit too far and his shoes. Well, he wasn't wearing socks so running was only going to make him chafe. We sat in the spot, him holding a Dr. Pepper and me biting into one of the three slightly soggy sandwiches I bought for breakfast. I couldn't recall the last time I'd eaten since that damned ice cream. I tried everything, he said. Knocking, twisting the handle, even attempted to climb it, but he just didn't set shop for the night. No one was around and I was starting to feel ridiculous, so I went home and CR went to bed. But he was inside, I could hear him walk around and mutter to himself. I swear I heard something shatter, maybe he got hurt and needed help, but he was gone in the morning. He was in my house. What? He was in my fucking house. I spilled the whole thing. The chair, the magnets, the phone, the face in the computer. My parents being completely knocked out. He paled visibly at that. Hands shaking too much to hold the can upright. He set it down and started to scratch his face up. No wonder it looked like that. Same happened to my mom on Tuesday. I tried to wake her up but. I thought she was. I tried calling an ambulance, anybody, but my phone was dead. Then suddenly it wasn't and it was 6am and she just, jolted awake. And freaked out on me for looming above her while she slept. Is that how you got that black eye? Yeah, but she didn't like, actually mean it. She never hits me. My mom doesn't either. But dads are a different story, aren't they? His mouth parted slowly, then he let out a meek yeah, staring into the distance. You have to admit it, I insisted. That he's not human. I think he might be a vampire. Like Dracula, I guess. But can vampires do things like this? I thought he might be some sort of gogol or his hind like the stories my mom tells. And he doesn't seem very... Vampire. -y. The original Dracula is very different from all the books they're putting out now. Jack is sexy? I rubbed my temples. Let's go with he's a vampire. How are vampires killed? Stake through the heart? You're going to kill him? I don't know. He was in my house. 
He shrunk back and I bit my own tongue in guilt. He'd pulled his hands up in defense, like I was going to strike him over a small outburst. I'm so I didn't get to finish. My name was yelled so loudly that everyone around turned around to stare at my father. I dropped what I was holding. A sandwich. Many sandwiches. Oh no. Oh, no 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 no. I tried to explain, to reason, to do anything, but he nearly ripped my arm off dragging me back to the car. My voice wavered towards the end, but it did nothing to calm down my father's rage. The slap knocked the wind out of me, but the terror had just started. He drove like a maniac, going way over the speed limit. Our car dove through, making several illegal passes as I clutched the seatbelt in sheer panic. I pleaded with him to slow down through tears, but after the second strike, the car took a sharp turn to the left, almost sending us off the road. I shut my eyes after that, not wanting to see what we were going to crash into. At some point he'd started to scream something, then he was silent again. We halted abruptly and with my blurred vision, I had to stumble out. The cemetery. We had somehow done a 50 minute drive in less than 20 and landed in front of a large iron gate. Dad? I asked. I didn't want to go inside, but he shoved me in. We kept walking, him leading the way until we were in an asymmetrical clearing. Look at that. Do you know who these people are? David Smith. L.O.E. Smith. David Jr. Smith. Um. I sniffled, using the corner of my shirt to wipe my nose. Relatives? This are my parents and older brother. Look at the graves around them, then back at these ones. What's the difference? I looked around. Most had plastic flowers or some type of decoration and were well kept. Ours was just dusty, with empty and cracked dirt on top. There's nothing on top? Yeah, I didn't like them very much. What else, Olivia? They're bigger? He clapped once, loudly and my body took a screenshot. His face had this weird grin on it. Like he was happy I was scared out of my mind. Exactly. Exactly. Do you know why? It's because I had to waste a lot of money to have three custom-made coffins for them to fit, Livy. They were each 500 pounds at their time of death and needed medical assistance to walk around. Walk was a big word for them, now that I think about it. Liver failure, heart attack and guess this, your uncle died shitting himself. Literally. His cause of death. And do you know why? Because they were disgusting pigs. They lived to eat. Thousands down the drain just to have soggy Big Macs as a midnight snack. Is this how do you want to end up as? In a hospital bed that can't even support you. No, of course not. But. Don't but me, Liv. If I'm healthy and alive now, it's because they were so enamored with your uncle that I escaped young. Your grandmother was even concerned that I had an eating disorder while she slobbered around, smelled like rotting food and unable to take care of herself. And you know what? It wasn't because they were obese that you didn't know their names, he got really close, forehead to forehead. My eyes darkened. I was at the edge of passing out. It's because they were gluttons. Selfish, entitled, throwing tantrums like children. There's not a single breathing person in this world who had any respect for them. They were red-faced laughing stocks. I want you to be better than this, Olivia. I want you to be someone people look up at too, not in disgust, not in ridicule, but in admiration. And that can't happen, if you resort to being anything less than perfect, you understand? I went out like a nightlight without answering. An ice cream truck man comes by every night at 3.14 am. He says he can make all our wishes comes true. Part 5. Friday, 3.14 am, July 6, 2012. The door swung open on its own. I remember sitting on the edge of my bed, fully clothed and with dried tears over my cheeks. I was just so tired. From hunger from lack of sleep, from just everything all the time. School seemed so far away and yet so close. Would I even be able to handle it if this went on? I didn't even notice it at first, until a light breeze ruffled a piece of paper on the table. My bedroom door was wide open and instead of the hallway, I saw the ice cream truck's front, standing outside in a random parking lot. Perhaps I should have closed the door, changed and got under the covers, but I couldn't imagine waking up in the morning and having to do the same shit over and over again. If I disappeared, that meant that the pressure would also fade with me, right? I recognized the place by the dead trees on the left, it was an abandoned parking lot, set to be constructed into a skating field by the government. My body moved on its own, compelled by some sort of magic, or desperation. It was chilly, dark and the only thing lit up was that damn truck. Two silhouettes were already standing on its side. Liv, Owen shouted, grabbing me by the shoulder and shaking me hard. 
I startled, as I hadn't seen him since. When was the last time I saw him? I've been calling you for hours. What? Oh, that. My dad took my phone. Max hid behind him, scratching his throat for attention. I'm sorry about that. It's fine. It's not your fault, I just. I don't know what is going on anymore. Everything just went sideways so fast. You can say that again. My brother got arrested for a DUI, Owen said, shaking his head. Mom is inconsolable. And now there's someone waiting for Max's dad to come home. Wait what? Who's waiting around the neighborhood? It was like I jumped out from the bottom of the pool, finally able to see and hear properly. He's gambling again, Max responded. Lost all the money he won last time and then some more. Jesus, we're all having the time of our lives out here. We stayed in silence for a second, before Owen shrugged. Now what? It's not open. The truck then decided to explode like a popped balloon. The door flung open, the tent rose up violently and the music box started to sing with a booming unnecessarily loud tone. A row of patriotically colored decorations slid across the roof of the van, tied by an invisible hand. Jack stood inside the brightly lit interior, head resting on his hands. There were three glasses in front of him, each filled with three perfect dollops of red ice cream with an identical cherry on top. He'd also dropped his disguise. Max was the first to scream at the sight of him, first a yelp of surprise, then a drawn-out scream of terror. His eyes were twice as large as they should have been and they were strangely slanted, the inner corners dropping down to the middle of his nose. His mouth was too wide, revealing a row of pearly white teeth that looked very normal, despite the fact they just kept going from ear to ear. He was longer too, not thinner or fatter, just tall enough to lean over to fit inside the truck. I could see his many jointed hands curling and cracking like the snapping of twigs. Yet not a single blonde hair was astray and his uniform was as immaculate as always. He smelled of confectionery sugar as we approached him, all of us screaming and walking at the same time, hypnotized. Had he not done something to us, I would have done a 180 and ran without a second thought. But there were hands, literal, yet unseen hands on my shoulders, six-fingered ones, holding me back. Jesus. Jesus and Holy Mary. Save us. I expected better from you Owen. Don't you know better than to judge the way someone looks? Max, he turned to him, who was running in place, held back by the same thing. Stop that. Finally, he turned to me, wrapping his hands around the stem of the glass cup, pinky finger extended. I am here to make you an offer, a solution for all your problems. Or a wish that will make all your dreams come true. If you ask for it. Why? What's it to you? Obviously I want something in return. A big box stood up on eight spider legs, rattling inside. It made its way up his shoulder, like a parrot to a pirate. Pandora here needs to be fed. From you, I want a lock of your hair. Small price to pay for a gift, isn't it? If it's a gift, then one doesn't have to pay for it. That's a sale. This is a bargain. He winked. It was creepy. From you, Owen, I want your clipped nails. Ohm got ice creams mitt with nails, he whispered in terror. Don't be ridiculous. Do you know how unsanitary that is? God knows where a preteen boy's hands have been. Jack waved him off. From you, Max, I want a vial of blood. His eyes rolled back and the poor boy passed out cold, held midair by both Owen and the other thing. Who are you? You already know my name. Let me explain to you the process of service for our little establishment, hmm? He pulled his leg over the counter and rolled out from the truck. He was easily seven feet tall, towering over all of us and making me feel very, very small. You tell me what you want, a solution for all your problems or all your dreams coming true. You pay me in what I require of you. You eat the ice cream. You go home and you'll never see me again while I'm alive. You'll leave? Yes. I always do. I'll take it. The words rushed out of my mouth before I had the time to mull it over. An end. Finally, an end to all of this. Hold on a minute. While you're alive? Owen interrupted. For all his bravado, I could see it in his face, he too was lured in by the idea. Or was too desperate to care. Smart boy, he said. There was a hint of anger in his eyebrows, or the place where they were supposed to be. The more I looked at him, the more his features seemed to melt off. His skin was wrinkly at the seams, like he was wearing someone else's face as a mask. He probably was. The monster stared down at Owen, but lowered Max to the ground. The grip got loose enough for me to reach behind him and help him settle on a flat surface. Whatever he was saying, I couldn't hear it. 
Their voice suddenly came through a static, they just opened their mouths and spurts of crackle spilled out of them. My best friend since I was four began to cry violently, crumpling down as if was a used cheat sheet. I ended up holding both of them, the back of my throat raw and hurting. I was just so hungry. I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to be here. I didn't want them to get hurt. Just leave us alone. Please. Please. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me what you want, you little bitch and I'll go. He got so close to my face that I could smell his breath. I recoiled. An infection. He was a goddamned infection and he smelled like it, of rotten food and pus. I want I want a solution to all my problems. My words quivered, unsure, but he didn't go away. His face stayed an inch away from mine, morbid eyes unblinking. His love crafty and arms reached for one of the melted ice cream cups and a pink plastic spoon with a heart shaped handle. It was warm to touch, too warm and steaming. Whatever was inside, it was no longer pretending to be a nice treat. It was the color of wine, ready to drag me into delirium. I swallowed. A light sniff had me flinch back from the concoction. A steady stream of blood began tricking from my nose. Sharp. That poison smelled sharp and it stained my shirt. I brought the spoon to my lips and with it, a pair of scissors mimicked the motion. The were open and brushing my ear. When they closed, they were bound to take a chunk of it with them. In that very moment, Max took off. I whipped around, shocked, as he ran through the lot without blinking an eye. The creature was onto him in a second. Its legs were uneven and it took three awkward steps before it bent on all fours and started to stalk it. It did odd zigzags and screamed with a high-pitched screech inspired by a toddler throwing a tantrum. Something must have gotten to Owen, because he also ran in the same direction for some stupid reason. The creature caught up to Max, tripping his feet and crawling on top of him when he landed with a crack on the dust. It tapped its claws over his thick belly, mocking him for being a pig, an elephant, a whale. He sounded so much like my father that my fingers automatically clenched around the glass, afraid that he would take it. Owen got to Jack, body slamming it off balance. He didn't have anything to defend himself with, but I did. I had a cup that I could break and shove it down his horrid giraffe throat. It overpowered them easily, but it concentrated too hard on breaking their ankles to see me coming. Unlike Max, I could run faster and without dropping anything. Unlike Owen, I could give him a kick where his balls were supposed to be. It must have been male, because it howled with pain. Now who's a little bitch? His head unscrewed itself, fangs reaching out to take a bite out of me, but Owen pulled at its hair to try and stop it. He didn't have the strength to actually do that, but it was enough. Enough for me to spill the contents of the glass straight into its mouth. Max crawled and made himself a human speed bump, tripping it as karma for what it had done to him just seconds prior. It began to convulse violently, smoking and melting into bones that jittered around senselessly. It hissed and the surrounding world hissed with it. Six eyes burst from its body like popped pimples, rolling with intent. They seemed to be conscious enough to look at us and know we'd killed, or at least heavily injured, their owner. The spider box skittered around, opening up with a squeaky sound. Inside there were more eyeballs, veiny and yellow. It freaked me out when they went towards it. What if he could respawn from those things and come after us with interest? I jumped on it. The crawling legs broke beneath my weight, but I didn't stop until the hinges snapped off and it fully stopped moving. Max seemed to get the hint and got back on his feet, waddling to squish the little orbs, who weren't quick enough to escape. His arm was bent where it wasn't supposed to and he was still crying, but at least he was able to move around. Owen, on the other hand, laid with his feet backwards from their original position, completely silent. The shock had gotten the best of him and he was giggling like a maniac on cocaine. We won. Somehow. We need to call an ambulance, Max said. I don't have my phone. I repeated. Mine's dead. Guys, Owen butted in. He was still in hysterics, but his face was tight with fear and he was fixated at a point beyond us. I don't think we're at the construction site anymore. There was nothing surrounding us, it was true. The only object I could make out was the ice cream truck, open and ready for business. Otherwise, a looming darkness swallowed all that remained. There was no way we'd find our way home like this. What was left of Jack was now a foul stain on gravel, except I was now noticing that it wasn't really gravel. It was. It was like a badly carpeted floor, full of bumps and tears. Where the hell were we? Fear made a knot in the back of my throat. I hadn't thought that maybe the thing could teleport us to an alternate universe. If we were lucky, maybe we were simply in a place we couldn't recognize because it was night, but who knows. 
The only reason why neither of us wasn't feeling any pain was because we were disassociating in shock, but that wouldn't last long. Maybe there is a phone in the van, Max said, pointing at it. It's not like we have any other options. I shrugged. We needed some fabric to put his arm in a sling and maybe a way to twist Owen's ankles the right way around. You carry his legs, I'll do the rest. It took us a good 15 minutes with short breaks to reach the lighted area. My muscles ached with overuse, but we were so close that I didn't want to give up. I won't be winning any sports medals anytime soon. Dad's gonna be real disappointed, Owen said, his head just hanging off upside down. It's going to be okay buddy. I wasn't convincing anyone, but it was an automatic response. What else could I do? We should get in the van and try driving off. See where we land. Can you drive? I know where the gas and brake pedals are? I answered, uncertain. It can't be that hard to figure out. We'd left behind a trail of disturbed dust and blood, but we made it. The driver's door was locked, but the back was only kept together by a sliding chain. It opened to reveal a hallway similar to one of a cheap hotel. That's not how an ice cream truck looks on the inside, right? Max said, eyes wide. He let me hold Owen, now unconscious, while he rounded to see the open mouth where Jack had come from. I didn't dare look down at my friend, afraid I'd lose it the second I thought too much about it. My chest was tight like a heart attack and I fought to hold back the tears. The tip of my nose hurt with the effort. I couldn't imagine what Owen was feeling right then. It looks pretty ordinary from over there. Should we go in? What choice do we have? But what if there's more of him? What? Choice? Do. We. Have. Max? You go in first, he suggested. You're the strongest. I nodded. He was too cowardly to go in, but I didn't blame him. Nothing felt real and he was injured. Jack could pop in from behind us at any moment, or someone similar to what he was. The hallway's walls had a yellow diamond pattern, paired by dull brown doors and floor. Each door had a handwritten note stuck below a number. Camera, the cooling room. Camera, the organic flavor room. Camera, the binding room. Camera, I told you to stay out of this room. Camera, the murder room. Camera, the play room. The corridor split into two directions, left and right. They were both identical, leading down to wide mirrors with golden elaborate frames. I swallowed and briefly thought about turning back around but couldn't. The thought of Jack being there when I spun around frightened me so much that I had to make a decision. I choose left, the same way my father had told me to do when we were in the corn maze. If I only went left, I'd be able to find my way back. The walk was long. Far longer than it should have been. My reflection got larger and larger, but there was no sign of it jumping out and attacking me. There was only my terrified face and messed up hair. My shirt was unsalvageable. I was apparently missing a shoe and hadn't noticed a thing. My nose was still dripping blood all over and I'd probably lost a bucket of it on the floor at that point. There was a handle on the mirror and by some miracle, the key was still on the hole. It took one push for me to reach the front seats of the van. It was a relatively normal interior. There were two worn down leather seats, a wheel, a mirror and a pair of furry dice dangling off of it. A Hawaiian dancing doll had fallen next to the gear shift and the place was drowning in torn plastic wrapping. Beef jerky. Chicken breasts. Fish sticks. A gallon of spoiled full fat milk, half finished. It must have gotten tired after working in an ice cream van because there wasn't even a hint of candy bars anywhere. The best thing I found was the speakerphone radio. I could hear my own voice outside, telling Max and Owen to get in and head left. The very back of the truck shut close. The engine roared to life after I put my seat belt on, impatiently waiting for them to reach me. When they got in, I was practically crying with relief. Max laid Owen down, cushioning his head with legs. He looked a lot older than he was somehow, but held himself together. There was something in his eyes that hadn't been there before. Hope. I think we actually won. Don't jinx it, I said, giddy with the idea of being free at last. We would go to a hospital, talk to the police and get a solid day of sleeping in. Maybe it was a good thing the monster showed up in the middle of summer, we wouldn't have to take off time at school. I couldn't see where I was going, but my foot slammed on the gas and we went flying to whichever direction we were in. There were a lot of buttons on the compartment, each doing something stupid. I had to stretch to reach each one and see which would turn on the long lights because trucks just aren't made to be driven by 11 year olds anymore. When I did find it, the road ahead turned out to be some kind of dirt path, with cornfields on either side. A speed limit table sent a rush of relief through me. 
Surely Monsterland wouldn't limit its vehicles at 60 miles slash hour, right? We followed the road until we saw lights and signs of civilization. My eyes were completely focused on the road, hands gripping the steering wheel tightly. Max nudged me with something cold. Drink, he said. We need to save our strength for now. He held the plastic water bottle for me while I swallowed the whole thing down greedily. I hadn't realized how thirsty I'd been until that moment. Are you sure we should have drunk that? I mean, this is Jack's truck. He asked. What? I turned around to face him. He'd been right beside me half a second ago, but I saw he was still sitting with Owen on his lap, holding two empty bottles. Their injuries were gone and I realized that my nose was no longer bleeding. Max, did you move from there? No? How did you hand me the water then? You handed me the water. How? I'm driving. The realization struck him the same time that it hit me, but it was too late. It was Owen's turn to scream. Look out. I whirred around just in time to see Jack in the middle of the road. We were going too fast for me to stop, so we crashed right into him. The windshield shattered on impact, splattering glass all over my face. Between the blood raining down my face, I saw him sprawled on the hood, crawling up. He was smiling widely, like a cat that got the cream. His eyes were brimming with joy and satisfaction. We were right across each other when he lifted up a pair of scissors. The only thing I could do was put my hands up and close my eyes, but no impact came. Instead, a snipping sound next to my ear jolted me awake, in a hospital bed. Jack was resting on a chair, now fully humanoid. My mother was asleep next to him. He smiled again. Beautiful mask on and held a long black snake in his hand. It was my braid. He'd cut it off. It was nice doing business with you, my dear. Nice try though. And just like that, he got on his feet and walked out, closing the door behind him right as my mother stirred awake. An ice cream truck man comes by every night at 3.14 am. He says he can make all our wishes comes true. Final part. Today, 12.14 pm, 2022, Max Mulligan my name is Max and if you've been following any of this, you know who I am. It has been a decade since the incident, but the trauma that was inflicted upon us those days still echoes in our lives. It's because of that, that I'm taking over writing the epilogue of our story. While Olivia remembers most of what happened with Jack in detail, the rest of the year is completely blank. There are times that she will look for her father and forget that he, like ours, has been missing since. The official police report said we were found in the back of the ice cream truck and were brought to a hospital while unconscious. Their leading theory was that our fathers were in gambling debt and we were taken as collateral, which explains why they disappeared. There was no sign of the mystical left for the cops to scratch their heads over, so that was it. The case went cold. There's not really much to say after that. He kept his promise. Every issue that we had before July 2nd, no matter how small, faded into thin air. My mother and I moved shortly after the incident, luckily landing in the same building as Owen. She found a good job and quit smoking which mellowed her out quite a bit. Without dad to stress us out, as bad it may sound, our lives did get better. She hasn't had a relationship since, however, and I have no doubt that somewhere in her heart she's still thinking of him. I can't say for sure if he's dead. There are days when I wake up in cold sweat and I see him standing in the reflection of my mirror, showing me a bad set of cards. Owen, on the other hand, was more devastated over his father than both of us combined. When his brother got out of prison, they combed the entire city together, looking, but never found any leads, dead or alive. He seems to have forgotten or suppressed the supernatural side of the events and I don't blame him. He doing better recently, still searching, but he's getting a degree to help endangered youths and put his and I quote bad memories into relatable ones. Unquote. The only good thing out of it was his brother grew out of his delinquent phase almost instantly. He owns a mechanic shop now and last I heard, he and his girlfriend are expecting. Owen's mom looks pretty happy to be a grandma, but last I heard there was some friction over them not getting married before the baby comes. Olivia's life went a little sideways for a few years. She was selectively mute for a good while and did a stint in a mental hospital, but she's back on track now. Her mom is seeing someone new, a fellow Albanian man. Liv is still on the fence about it, but she's happy that her mom's happy. She doing therapy while working on her law degree, which is good because I'll need a lawyer to get me out of the mess I got myself into. I'll confess. I knew the police and our moms were lying to us, but I didn't tell them and I have yet to do so. I joined the force specifically so I could look into those files and I was right. They found human remains in buckets, ready to be processed into food. Not only that, 
but they profiled them as missing adults from 2002, previously linked to a traveling serial killer. What I'm really interested in, however, is the body they discovered on July 13, 2012. A white male in his 20s with blonde hair and average build. Jack. It was Jack's human shape and I'm sure of it. He's dead. That would be a good thing, I think, if it weren't for the fact that he'd clearly been bitten in half by something. The left side of his corpse had been chewed and spit out by another creature large enough to have a mouth capable of doing it. There were signs of a struggle, if anything went by the blood splatter and the scales stuck under his nails. His remaining facial expression was one of horror. Olivia has handed me the card that Jack gave her, with the company's name on it. Late Night Cravings Incorporated. I've been looking for them, but so far, they have no media presence. But I think I'm getting closer. I'm looking into any case that's similar to ours. Missing children and adults, anything food related. There is a chain of restaurants that have different names, but the same over the top menu. It's my leading evidence. My dreams are getting more violent and Olivia has been doing her own research. I'm not sure if I should tell her yet. She's been far braver than I, but it's my turn to put the big boy pants on. I don't think I'll ever forgive myself if she got hurt or even killed while on the wild manhunt, I'm going in. She's going back to New York soon, to clean up what her grandparents left. Apparently, there's still one storage unit her dad forgot to check. I'll miss her, but the further away she is, the safer she'll be. I have a theory that Jack was fired by upper management for not sticking to the rules. That he was supposed to be paid first. That we're only alive because of his mistake. If so, they're intelligent enough to cut off loose ends, but not to hide birth records. Jack was born in summer of 1980 and while his mother is dead, his father lives on. I guess I'll see if this is a genetic condition soon. Even so, I'll be ready to take them on when the time comes. Whatever this company is, its employees have to meet a gruesome end. I'll make sure of that.